This summer, we cycled from Rome in Italy to our home in Newcastle in the UK. We packaged up our bikes and hopped on a flight to Rome. We started in Rome following the Via Francigena, which is an old pilgrimage walking route that goes from Canterbury in the UK to Rome in Italy. Although we did it in reverse to finish at home. On leaving Rome, we met Enrico, the fittest 70 year old I've ever met. Do you do this every day? No, no, no. Every other day. Every other day. <laughs> we hadn't quite anticipated how hot it would be, so we only made it to our first campsite after dark. Let's get In Tuscany, the views were lush and the gravel was lusher. This shows exactly where we are, and we'd followed the Via Francigena out of Italy into Switzerland and using the Eurovelo from Basel to get to Brussels and then heading north to Amsterdam to get the ferry home. We're meant to be up there but it's a bit too hot for climbing that high. So we're here. Me and Ben are in eternal. We finally got out at 6am today. And it's gorgeous. Tuscany was just so beautiful. It was insane. Look at that dirt line. Mm. <laughs> the chief navigator for the holiday. Woo -woo. It's a brutal climb. After five days of hard cycling, we choose ourselves to a day off. Woo! Next stop is the bottom of the Alps. We just had to tackle the Apennines first. That's where we came from, and that's where we're going. Setting off at 5am was 100% the way to go to avoid the midday heat. This is one of the churches providing accommodation for pilgrims on the Via Francigena. We entered the flat farmlands between the Apennines and the Alps. 
rice paddies and tomatoes seem to be their main crop. This is one of the pilgrims accommodations we stayed in. Breakfast with the sunrise. We found cliff bars. Big day today, eating lots already. It's been a bit wrecked. Carbonara! set off from Vercelli in the dark. Here you can see the Alps in the distance. On entering the Auster Valley, the landscape dramatically changed again. Here we sit of our first warm showers host. We are climbing the Alps. <laughs> we started in Alster. We're climbing up to Grand San Bernardo. We then did the most amazing descent of my life, look at those views, all the way down to our campsite in Martigny. In some 10 out of 10 fashion, lots of clashing colours and a lovely neck flap. <laughs> Today we're following the Rhone to near Lausanne for a short rest day, 50 kilometers and we'll be done. We made it to Lake Geneva for a swim with my family. We've had gear cable issues, but we're getting there just as the sun sets over Lake Geneva. <laughs> Going for a morning swim. Ooh. There we are, there's Lake Geneva. We're climbing away from it. We spent the day cycling through flattish Switzerland. <laughs> Look at that castle. A nice cute climb to start the day. <laughs> We're in France! Felt a bit broken when we crossed into France, but we bought hummus and bread in Switzerland, so... Good clouds, bad clouds. The rain has definitely hit now. <laughs> Absolutely soaking. Yeah, the sun is rising on day 15? 14. 14. Woo! <laughs> 
yeah! So we're now following the Via Dormia Plantugina, which is Euro Vela 5. We also spent the day following the wine route, cycling through many, many vineyards. And I've been Regina, I've been Ooh, yeah. We've woken up to a very rainy France today. This canal is 313 kilometres long, connecting the River Marne to the Rhine. There was tons of history along the route. It's all water, as far as you can see. This day involved three countries. We left France, did a little bit in Germany and ended up in Luxembourg. There were herons absolutely everywhere. We were in Germany. It took us about 10, 15 kilometers to realize we were actually here. That's how easy the borders are in Europe. So today we are crossing Luxembourg. We camped last night just on the German side of the border. And tonight we're on the Belgium side. This is a whistle stop tour of Luxembourg. We just got a lift from the bottom to the top of Luxembourg. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. After lots of rolling hills, we ended up on a railway path with super long tunnels. We've entered Belgium. The cycling quality is definitely a lot different to Luxembourg, which was looking at ten. weather quite similar to England. He lays on, the sunnies are off. So first of all day in Belgium and we're staying with warm showers tonight. Belgian waffles in Belgium. It's beautiful, but windy. Look at Ben's baguette shaped back. We came across a very popular sportive with cyclists of all abilities. They were cycling through quite a hilly part of Belgium. It certainly reached us off the Eurovilla and we've just ascended this descent and dangerous. Another lovely day beside rivers and canals as we got deeper into Belgium. Our first windmill of the trip. As we travelled across different countries, it was hard to keep up with which language to speak, especially in Belgium. <laughs> so today we're cycling through Brussels to the Netherlands. We left Brussels and headed for Antwerp. The cycle paths looked more and more like the Netherlands.
This Dutch bloke let us draft him on his commute. Despite no cleats and on a mountain bike, we had to work hard to stay in the draft. I'll talk you through some of the essentials we've discovered on this trip, which is we're on day 20 of 22, so we, I feel like we know what's cracking now. The best one is nappy cream. Heating gravel is bad for the butt. One of my favourites is my little pot of salt and pepper, which has spiced up our pesto pasta. For the sun, especially in Italy, the neck flap was a great addition. Ben's favourite is the wooden spoon for cooking. It doesn't scratch our titanium pots. And for coffee, we have this little coffee filter which you prop up on your like cooking pot and then it just drips through. Like alarm, um, so it's a movement alarm and it just makes a horrible noise if anyone moves the bike. And then lastly, this is a little hand-sized bag which falls out to a proper little rucksack which has been great for our shopping and food. Today we're cycling to Den Haag by Amsterdam, 100 kilometers with less than 200 meters elevation. Join the tunnel? Yeah. Yeah. I've been waiting 2260 kilometers for Croquetten. Mayo. And chips. What have you? Cycling in Dutch cities is always an experience. Moving with purpose is definitely the way. We left Den Haag and headed towards the coast. There's a wonderful cycle path going through the sand dunes with lovely views and lovely tarmac. We headed to get our 5pm ferry home. a lot more bikes than when we last got this ferry back in March. We celebrated not missing our ferry with a pint and then waved goodbye to the Netherlands. We're in the time. The next morning we used the Hadrian cycle path to get to the Tyne. 2,375 kilometres cycled in just three weeks. We made it home. Thanks, Thanks for watching. watching.